Welcome to Season 3 of the Swalichi Stories, presented by the 4C Foundation and funded by Fonts Volkol 2 Participatsi. The Swalichi Stories series includes tales of our island's beloved legends, history and folklore as told by exceptional storytellers. 4C Foundation is honored to share these stories as it brings people together and bridges the gap between generations. These stories remind us of our culture, our heritage, our one island. Through these stories, we hope you feel more connected as we thrive to keep storytelling alive. Please enjoy this next one each story and all other stories within this series. And let us know if there are any other particular stories you would like to hear in the future. Enjoy! The story is called Who Can't Hear Will Feel. Tony and Bello are brothers who live with their mother Maisie in Cole Bay. The boys usually walk to school every day because their school was not very far from their home. Tyrone, Bello's best friend, also lives on the same path that the boys would pass every day. Tyrone! Tyrone! Bello shouted as he neared the gate of Tyrone. Are you ready? Tyrone was waiting on his step and raced towards the boys as he gave them both a boops. As the boys walked hastily down the rough and red dirt road of the lane, Bello shouted, Who want mangoes? Oh no, Bello. Remember Mama told us not to trouble Mr. Gum's mangoes? Yes, that is true, Tyrone. We don't want to get into trouble at all. Besides, Mr. Gums have some big, bad pit bull dogs too. Oh no, not me, said Tony. You boys are just cowards. You are letting fear take over your childhood days. Oh, you have some fun, man. Bello, you can give some manga to Nikki too. The girl who likes you in class. Tyrone grinned as his head bobs up and down desperately. All right, all right. But this is the last time, smiled Bello nervously. The boys bounced happily along the lane until they arrived at Mr. Gum's yard. There was a huge black gate with wooden pointed fencing on both sides. There was a white sign made out of wood that was nailed to the fence. It read, No trespassing. Beware of the dogs. You see that sign? Tony said weakly. That sign don't mean anything. And besides, the dogs are tied at the back, responded Tyrone. At that very moment, a black crow that was perched on the edge of the fence flew quickly towards Tyrone, almost touching his face. Move, bird! You want to frighten me? squealed Tyrone. This must be a sign, muttered Tony. There was a huge sweetie mango tree at the front of the yard with limbs hanging over the road. The mangoes were bright yellow and round. Mr. Gums's veranda, where he often sits in a rocking chair, was close to the tree. However, today, Mr. Gums was not on his veranda because it's Thursday and he normally sells fish in town early in the mornings. So here is the plan, Tyrone chided confidently like a leader. I will jump over the fence and climb the tree. Then I will throw down the mangoes to you and you put them in the bag. Why can't we just pick the mangoes that are hanging over the fence instead of going in the yard? I am climbing the tree because I will get the juicier ones and a lot more too, chuckled Tyrone. Tony, you will stay outside the gate and be the lookout man. If you see Mr. Gum's truck coming, run and tell us. Tyrone shouted as he jumped over the wall and Bello quickly followed him. Within a few minutes, Tyrone was up in the tree and throwing down mangoes to Bello, who would put them in his school bag. Look one more there to your right, Bello exclaimed. I need that one for Nikki. It looks sweet just like her, <laughs> Bello said with a big smile on his face. Don't you boys think that's enough now? We'll be late for school and we don't want teacher to call mama, shouted Tony. The boys did not hear him. They were too busy joking, picking and catching mangoes. Tyrone laughed and laughed at Bella's remarks. And before you know it, there was a loud crack, crack. What was that? inquired Bello. Before Tyrone could answer, his foot slipped off the branch which broke off from the tree. Tyrone was barely hanging from the branch as the crack got louder. 
The noise alerted the dogs at the back as they barked frantically from behind the house. Lord help us! screamed Bello as he ran to catch Tyrone who was almost touching the ground with his back. I hear Mr. Gum's truck coming, Tony shouted nervously. One of Tyrone's ankles was tangled between the mango leaves and the branch that fell with him from the tree. As Bello assisted him to untangle his foot, out of nowhere there was a loud bark <laughs> and a big black dog rushed down on the boys. Bello sprinted towards the gate and jumped over the fence in an attempt to escape, but he was too late. The dog launched on him and grabbed the end of his pants as he was climbing over. By this time, Mr. Gums' truck was at the gate. He jumped out after realizing what was causing all the commotion. He raced through his gate quickly to retrieve the dog. Stop now, Frisco! Mr. Gums shouted angrily at the dog. The dog continued howling loudly as Mr. Gums pulled him by his chain that was broken in two pieces. Go, Frisco! Mr. Gums screamed as the dog trotted hesitantly to the back of the house. What are you doing in my yard, boy? Mr. Gums asked Tyrone, who was now sitting frozen in fright at the trunk of the tree. Tyrone was speechless. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He started to cry softly and pointed to the gate in the direction of the other boys. But they were not there. They raced quickly down the hill at the high speed and never looked back. Mr. Gums took out his phone and called Melva, Tyrone's mother. He explained what he had witnessed in his yard and asked her to come for Tyrone. A few minutes later, Melva was at the gate with a big brown leather belt in her hand. Mr. Gums held Tyrone by the waist of his pants and pushed him towards his mother. Tyrone squealed as his mother grabbed him by the ear and they both marched in the direction of home. So this is why who can't hear will feel. We hope you enjoyed this inspiring Swalichi story presented by the 4C Foundation and funded by Font Vocal 2 Participati. We hope this story helped you to feel more connected to the island and to each other. More information on the story and schedule can be found on the 4C website and social media pages. We look forward to connecting with you again in our next Swalichi story.